what's up grinder school this is Colin Sans and as you can see I find myself on the grinder school webpage more exactly I am looking at a couple of cash game hand histories which were recently posted by grinder school member super unknown and cool poker name and I chose out two these two hand histories because they show a point that I make in a lot of my uh, full uh, videos and my live play videos where I adapt or at least where I use a style which is more of an wait until you hit type of style and then start raising just because a general strategy at the micro stakes uh, is waiting until you hit your monster hand and then start betting and raising just because people in general at the micro stakes don't like to fold uh, let's without any further ado uh, go quickly over these hands let's take this one a hand similar we have ace5 suited we are on the button uh, it's a hand by a cool poker name. Uh, cutoff raises 3x or about 3x. Um, and the hero calls from the button. I'm not going to talk about the pre flop. Eh? Pre flop, it's um, nah. Uh, I, w I would just fold. I would just fold here. Um, uh, there, uh, or uh, I would 3 bet. But the original poster of the hand didn't post any stats. So I can't really comment on this. But this is calling with ace five so that is it's I mean I, I, I need to know how uh, cutoff plays uh, I would rather fold here the majority of the time a small percentage of the time I will three bet depending on the cutoff and a small percentage I would also um, a small percentage I would three out a small percentage I would call but the huge majority of the time I would just fold my ace five suit here but anyway uh, we flop Top pair, weak kicker, and the nut flash draw, and the cutoff leads. And Hero, for some reason, uh, makes a min race here. And this goes against, like, if Hero asks himself after he uh, analyzes his game and goes over his hands, Hero should really know why he is raising here. And I doubt that he's gonna come up with a sensible reason here you have top pair you have weak kicker more than likely you gonna have the best hand with top pair and you have a nice if you don't have the uh, best hand you really have a nice redraw so what you are accomplishing here uh, with your race is that you're gonna fold out all his air type of hands let's say he has like pocket fives uh, and you make the min raise here, he's just gonna fold because I mean, there's no real reason for him to continue. And by this, you also take away all his bluffing opportunities on later streets. And it's not that you really have to protect your hand on the uh, and it's also not that you really have to protect your hand. You have, I mean, you have top pair, you have the nut flush draw, so I mean, you are all holding all the you have position, you have all the cards and I mean there's nothing really bad that can happen uh, essentially so you raise this only for value against like the, the like the seven eight of hearts type of hands these are probably not gonna fold the well, they're for sure not gonna fold nobody folds flush draws um, so these are essentially the only hands, but I doubt that you were thinking about that when you made the min raise here, that you want to charge his lesser flush draws. Uh, so I really don't like the raise uh, on the flop here. Uh, it doesn't do any good. Uh, you're only going to uh, isolate yourself against the range that you don't beat. True, you have the flush draw, but I would rather wait until you hit the flush draw before you start making raises here. Just because if you don't make the, if you don't hit your uh, flush draw, you just are building a huge pot against the hand that crushes you. So really, no reason uh, to raise the flop here. Just wait until you actually hit your uh, flush and then start raising. Then I don't have any problem. Of course, I don't have any problems with that. Uh, with it then, uh, but as played now, um, 
no I will, I'll, I'll definitely definitely just call uh, on the flop uh, I don't think I'm gonna go over uh, the rest of the hands uh, oh well that sounds okay let's go okay the cutoff calls uh, you hit trips uh, you bet full parts um, let me check stat uh, let me check the stack sizes uh, do you really need to bet full pot to get all the money in? I don't think so, no, for sure not. You can bet like even 80 cents, 90 cents, uh, and shove the river. I mean, there is no there is no scare cards for you to come, so I'll bet a bit lower and then shove any river. Um, in this case, you bet full pot, uh, cut off raises. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look really good when he raises, but I mean, I, ca I can't fold here. Um, if he has a better ace x uh, like ace queen or ace jack um, you still have equity with your uh, heart uh, outs mm, you also have equity if you to hit a five then and uh, make the full house but i mean when he ships it in here through i'm not really happy but we can't really fault uh, i think you can come up with a a wide enough range for uh, the cutoff to make uh, the call here uh, to make the call here plus EV so let's see what other people had to say about this uh, full pre uh, flat on flat yeah I agree with this yeah I agree here with super unknown uh, CF natural a full pre flop yeah yeah, he uh, refers to the spectrum of three bedding hands or folding hands. I agree with this. Uh, if you haven't watched the video, uh, cool poker name, definitely watch uh, the three bed spectrum as characters calls it. Mm, the raise on the flop, yeah. I think uh, everybody agrees uh, more or less with uh, what I was saying here. Mm. Yeah. Indeed. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna quickly get the other hand because it's uh, quite similar. And again, this was a hand. I have to look for it. Posted by Super Unknown. I think. No, it's not. It's. Uh, oh, excuse me. I think it was this hand. Yeah. Here it's, uh, excuse me, I was wrong in the beginning, it's actually handout Brunstein, which is quite similar uh, in the sense that, uh, again, I'm not going to go over the uh, pre-flop play. Uh, under the gun, uh, raises, we're in the cutoff, the 9 10 suited pre-flop, um, since uh, essentially the opening poster says that there is some uh, dynamic between the two of them, Although I doubted that five and a half after sixteen hands or something, but uh, it, it might have been. So okay, pre-flop we call with nine ten suited. Um, same as with the ace five suited. Although I like the call with nine ten suited more here than the call with ace five suited um, in the previous hand, just because we're gonna be dominated less. Um, with uh, hands like 9 10 suits when under the gun uh, raises. Uh, anyway, uh, the flop comes, A is 3, uh, loose, and under the gun bets 20 cents. The flop is, the pot is 37 cents. And again, um, the Grand School member here decides to make the raise. I mean, I know that you want to fold out maybe hands like King Queen. Uh, hand which essentially beats you uh, because you have 10 high essentially um, and the guy is going to fold through but look at it this, this way if the guy has I mean you have to look at his range and you wanna extract the most value out of your opponent range without risking yourself without risking uh, your stack yourself and the guy is giving you a really good price he's betting 20 cents into a, a almost 40 cent pot so he's giving you in like one into four uh, one in 20 cents to win 
he's giving you one into three to make this call here so I mean and you have a flush draw and I'm sure that if uh, if you hit your flush you're gonna get another street out of him and if you don't get another street of, out of him it means that he had like king queen uh, something so it doesn't matter what the next card is let's say the next card is like the deuce of clubs uh, a complete blank if he checks to you the chances are that you uh, are going to bet I would bet essentially and he's going to fold his king queen anyway and you're gonna take down the pot and you're gonna risk a lot less against an aggro uh, against an aggressive ag ag aggressive guy this way than you do by raising here uh, on the flop and risking yourself to what exactly happens a re-raise now does it mean that I never uh, raise flop like this when I have the flush draw well no, but we have not the nut flush draw. Let's say the flop was, um, let's say the flop was um, the ace. Well, let's say the flop. It's difficult to say. Let's say the flop was nine, ten of diamonds, and the two deuce of clubs, and I'm holding ace queen of clubs. Then I wouldn't mind. Uh, raising there because then your equity is even if you get a uh, reship on your equity is gonna be huge probably uh, against uh, uh, and you you I mean your equity is gonna be big enough to get it in there uh, but right now if you get re-raised here uh, I mean your equity is is not good uh, I would rather just make the call here you're getting a decent price wait until you're hit you said that you have an aggressive dynamic with him well if uh, if a diamond comes off and he barrels or he t he checks to you and you bet well you have an aggressive dynamic he might actually play back at you or he just might just doesn't believe you um, beca because yeah because for the sake of it so that, uh, again I would just you're getting a nice price wait until you're hit don't put yourself into a difficult uh, situation. These are micro stakes games. Um, at higher stakes, you, you can play a lot more aggressive. But come on, this is five and hell. Um, just uh, listen. Uh, what is G GGP telling here? Yeah, he's also not raising uh, the flop. Um, Pre-flop. Uh, Pre-flop. Uh, yeah, I agree that it either it's more it's more often a fault than a call. Um, he's evenly split. There is a dynamic, yeah. There is a dynamic so that he might dunk off a stack if you hit like a really good hand. But um, I would rather f uh, fault a nine ten suited here. Uh, it, it's a hand that a lot of people play in position. Uh, just because it looks really nice but in the end it's more difficult to play and especially I would play the 9 10 suited hand if I have a, a better read on my opponent uh, and not over the 16 hands if I know that uh, he's gonna see bet once and then gonna give up uh, on a lot of uh, on a lot of uh, stuff like for instance here uh, like the flop is an ace high flop he's gonna see that this 100 percent of the time everybody's see betting this flop unless they have like kings i would essentially be worried uh if they didn't see that uh, this flop because then uh, they more than likely have some like kings queens type of hands and uh, are not going to fold uh, when you bet so uh, then you have to keep in mind that you're probably gonna have to barrel uh, but if the under the gun player is uh, any good I would check here a lot my ace axis even so to compensate for the times that I check with my queens and kings uh, anyway this uh, I'm, I'm, I'm again I'm uh, rambling on about stuff that is um, way over uh, way over the topic of this uh, short video so this I hope this these two hands show that when you hit like nice draws or you hit like kind of made hands decent hands but not like hands that you really want to get it in with just wait until you make your really strong hand and then start raising i promise you that people will not likely fold to you at the micro sticks 
Okay, so this was Colossus for a grinder school short. If you have any questions, please put them in the forums. Uh, again, um, I also want to mention Carotters uh, made a topic on it that people should post more uh, hand histories. If people po uh, post more hand histories and they like short videos that go quickly into, uh, quickly go over their hands, um, well, uh, you know, uh, let let uh, post more cash game hand histories. Tell me that you like uh, that you like the hands to be covered in short videos. And uh, I, I will definitely do more uh, of these type of videos. Okay, this was Colossus for Grind School. I hope you enjoyed it. See you guys.